Have you ever heard someone talk about a period or menstruation? Maybe instead of these words, you've heard something like, my aunt Flo is here to visit, or here comes the crimson tide. References to that time of the month and moon time are also common, but what do all of these things refer to? Hi, my name is Warris Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you about the menstrual cycle. You may have already experienced your first period, or you may have no idea what a period is. That's okay. Hopefully this video will help clarify what happens during the menstrual cycle and what that means for a person who menstruates. First, let's get familiar with the basic anatomy involved in the menstrual cycle. The ovaries are glands that contain ova or eggs and are responsible for regulating several hormones. These tubes connecting the ovaries to the uterus are called fallopian tubes and they are how eggs get from the ovaries to the uterus. The uterus itself is hollow and lined with what's called the endometrium. At the base of the uterus is the cervix, and below this is the vagina, which is the passageway that leads from the uterus to the outside of the body. While you may have heard of a period, this is only a small part of the entire menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle typically lasts 28 days, but keep in mind that everybody's body is different. It is not uncommon for people who menstruate to have cycles shorter or longer than 28 days. When you get your period, what's happening is the lining of the uterus, which has been growing and thickening throughout your cycle, is shed. So let's talk about this lining and how it is affected over the course of a menstrual cycle. Right after you finish your period, a new lining of the uterus or endometrium begins to grow. It becomes thicker and thicker while your body prepares to release an egg from an ovary. When your body is ready, an egg is released from an ovary into the fallopian tube. This is called ovulation. At this point, two things can happen. In one case, the egg is fertilized by a sperm, in which case the fertilized egg travels through the fallopian tube to the uterus and implants in the uterine lining. This process is the beginning of pregnancy. In the other case, the egg is not fertilized and it only survives for about 24 hours. If the egg is not fertilized, hormones signal the body to shed the uterine lining and you get your period. We learned that the uterine lining thickens throughout your menstrual cycle and that menstruation, or a period, is the shedding of this uterine lining which leaves the body through the vagina. The uterus is actually a muscle and it contracts during a period to help release the uterine lining and expel it from the body, which can cause discomfort in the form of cramping. For most people who menstruate, periods last for three to eight days, but this, like the length of your cycle, varies depending on the person. Much of the menstrual cycle is regulated by hormones. Two really important hormones are estrogen and progesterone. Levels of estrogen increase after your period and peak at ovulation. High levels of estrogen will make you feel really good. Around ovulation, you might have high energy, feel extra motivated, and want to be social. After ovulation, estrogen levels begin to decrease and progesterone levels increase. Progesterone can also positively influence your mood. In the week before your period, both estrogen and progesterone levels drop, and you might find yourself feeling a little down and possibly anxious or irritable. The levels of these hormones are lowest when your period starts, but the good news is your period signals the start of a new cycle and your estrogen levels will begin to increase again, working to make you feel good. There are a lot of other hormones involved in the menstrual cycle, such as follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, and I encourage you to learn more about these by reading the sources in the caption. I hope that you now feel like you understand a little bit more about the menstrual cycle. At this point, I want to focus specifically on periods, since they are the most tangible part of the menstrual cycle for most people who menstruate. There are a lot of different options for managing your bleeding on your period, and you have to figure out what works for you. Some of the most common forms of period hygiene products are sanitary napkins or pads, tampons, menstrual cups, and period panties. Pads work by sticking to your underwear and catching the blood as it comes out of the vagina. Some pros of pads are that you can see when they are full and you need to change them, and they are completely external. Tampons are specifically designed cotton balls that you insert in your vagina to absorb the blood as it exits through the cervix. Some pros of tampons are that they are mostly internal, except a string to help you with removal, which makes them discreet, and they usually come with an applicator, which makes them easy to insert. Menstrual cups come in several forms. 
but they are generally a medical grade silicone cup, which you insert in your vagina and which catches the blood as it exits through the cervix. Some pros of menstrual cups are that they are completely internal, so they are very discreet. They rarely leak if inserted properly, and they can be cleaned and reused, so they are more environmentally friendly than pads or tampons. Period panties are underwear with extra absorbent fabric built into them, so they work pretty much like a pad, catching the blood as it comes out of the vagina. Some pros of period panties are that they are completely external, and they can be cleaned and reused, so they are also more environmentally friendly than pads or tampons. There are some things to watch out for when choosing a method for managing your bleeding. First, only use what you are comfortable using. As you get more used to your period, you might want to try new things, but you do you. Second, always follow the directions for using period hygiene products. There is a very dangerous condition called toxic shock syndrome, or TSS, that can be more likely to occur if you leave a tampon or menstrual cup in your vagina for too long. These products will come with recommendations on how often to change them out, and it is important to pay attention to these details. Also, learn about the symptoms of TSS so you know what to watch out for, and always check with your doctor if you have any questions or concerns. But how do you know if something you're experiencing is normal or something to see the doctor about? It can be hard to know if something is wrong when you first get a period and aren't sure what's considered normal. So here are some tips from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office on Women's Health. First, it is suggested you see a doctor if you get your period before the age of 8 or if you have not gotten your period by the age of 15. Second, as I mentioned before, the contraction of your uterus can cause cramping, but if this cramping is severe and interferes with your normal life, or if you have pain at times other than around your period, you should go see a doctor about it. Third, be on the watch for irregular periods. This means the length of your cycle, from day one of your period to the start of your next period, varies greatly. Some variation is normal, especially in the first few years of menstruating, but if irregular periods persist or you miss several periods, talk to your doctor. To help with this, you might want to track your period on a calendar or an app. This can help you know what a normal cycle looks like for you and help you notice if something changes. Fourth, pay attention to how much you bleed. If you are bleeding for more than eight days, have to change tampons or pads every two hours or less, feel lightheaded or faint, or have clots, which are gel-like clumps of blood that are bigger than a quarter, it's recommended that you see a doctor. And fifth, if you bleed at times that aren't your period, it's good to check in with your doctor. These are some things to watch out for and can be signs of more serious conditions, but don't wait for one to happen to go see your doctor. If you have questions or feel like something is wrong, go see your doctor. They're there to help you. The last thing I want to talk about is what your period means. This varies a lot depending on who you are, where you're from, and what your personal, familial, and cultural beliefs are. In some cultures, menarche, or a first period, is celebrated as a transition from childhood to adulthood. In others, it is viewed as unclean, and many people who menstruate are discriminated against for it. Still others see menstruation as a beautiful spiritual process that leads to new life. There are many other interpretations of menstruation around the world, but it is almost universally taboo to openly talk about it, which is maybe why you're watching this video. It is often difficult for people who menstruate to find factually correct information on menstruation when no one is willing to openly talk about it and the world is pervaded with misconceptions and myths about menstruation. While the differences in cultural interpretation of menstruation are something to be aware of when you are conversing with people from other cultures and when you travel abroad, it is important to realize that close to half of all people on earth menstruate. It is a normal biological process and you should not be afraid to talk about it, especially with your doctor. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new about the menstrual cycle. If you want to look further into something I mentioned in the video, please look through the sources listed in the caption and please comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.